Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Whether it occurs on land or in the hangar of an aircraft carrier, it's hard to overstate just how destructive a fire can be. Not only does a fire put personnel at risk, but it can damage or destroy billions of dollars of equipment. Moreover, the presence of jet fuel, and in some cases, explosive ordnance, creates a whole new level of risk. This hangar, located at the Fairchild Air Force Base in Washington, U.S., is undergoing a test of its fire-suppressing foam system. In order to be certified by the United States military, the ceiling-based system must cover at least 90% of the aircraft's silhouette and the entire hangar floor with at least three feet of foam. What's more, it must accomplish this in just four minutes. If it is unable to hit these metrics in terms of speed and extinguishing efficiency, the base may have to start from the beginning. Though these foam systems are extremely effective at putting out a wide range of blazes, they are not foolproof. The U.S. military learned this quite well in 2014, when the fire suppression system was accidentally triggered during a routine alarm test at a National Guard station in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The resulting blanket of foam covered thousands of square feet, both inside and outside the hangar. It even buried several Black Hawk helicopters that had been parked outside. Most firefighting foam is designed to smother fires, but they often contain per and polyfluoroalkyl chemicals to aid in this process. This means that cleanup must be done with great care and thousands of gallons of water. The primary issue with foam fire suppression systems is that the thick bubbles used to quell a spreading fire also dramatically reduce visibility. This can make it nearly impossible for a team of firefighters or emergency responders to rescue individuals who may be trapped inside. This team of firefighters from the Edwards Fire and Emergency Services is conducting just such an exercise at Edwards Air Force Base in California. As foam hits the ground and expands inside the hangar, firefighters use their hoses to carve a path through the foam, allowing them to gain brief seconds of visibility. However, the foam still makes it incredibly difficult to find the decoy casualty stuck on the ground. Eventually, using teamwork, they are able to battle against the foam and locate the dummy. Firefighting foam is a relatively new invention. For that reason, scientists at the Naval Research Lab have continued to perform in-depth research on the foams themselves, as well as their potential. 
One of the primary goals of this research is to find a type of foam that can serve as a speedy fire suppressant while containing fewer potentially hazardous chemicals. During this round of research, chemical engineers tested nearly 30 different chemical fire suppressants from commercial sources. The team hopes to find the best possible option for use aboard ships sailing in the open ocean. As chemicals can pose a huge problem so far away from shore, the potential for environmental contamination is a major consideration. In recent years, foam technology has advanced exponentially. Many fire crews in the military and public sectors now use them via both automatic and handheld systems. In fact, the foam expands so quickly that just a few operators can cover the entire deck of an aircraft carrier in mere minutes. In 2021, the U.S. Navy performed tested an aqueous film-forming foam system aboard the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln. This type of system, known by the abbreviation AFFF, is purchased as a concentrate and deployed via overhead systems and traditional hoses. They are made up of hydrocarbon foaming agents and fluorinated surfactants, which allows them to form an airtight layer of film that cuts off the fire's oxygen supply. Best of all, these systems can act very quickly. This is important as aircraft carrier hangars are notoriously tight. Which means the fire can spread to adjacent rooms and levels in just a few minutes. Fires are among the biggest threats to any military vessel. Regardless of class, size, or complement. For this reason, every crew member is taught basic firefighting skills. Ships also hold frequent drills to ensure all personnel knows what to do if a fire breaks out in various parts of the ship. Communication is critical in these scenarios, which can feature everything from fake smoke and simulated fire to crew members holding fire flags. To ensure speedy reactions, hoses, protective suits, and firefighting equipment are hidden at various points around the interior and on the deck. Larger vessels will have their team of trained Navy firefighters to aid with shipboard education and lead the way in an emergency. Despite even the best training and equipment, shipboard fires are sometimes just too powerful to get under control. A stark reminder of this fact occurred on July 12, 2020, when an explosion rang out aboard the USS Bonhomme Richard. The Wasp-class amphibious assault ship 
was lucky enough to be undergoing maintenance at the naval base in San Diego. So, only 17 sailors and four civilians were injured. However, it took a total of four days for the fire to be extinguished. And that's with a combination of boats, helicopters, and land-based efforts. Unfortunately, the ship itself could not be saved, and it's estimated to cost $4 billion to replace it. Many of the U.S. Navy's Nimitz-class aircraft carriers have been equipped with what's known as a Countermeasure Washdown System, or CWS. This essentially consists of a series of sprinklers installed into the flight deck. However, crew members must use on-deck hoses to cover the tower and any other areas the sprinkler system can't reach. While it's true that this system would be engaged in the event of a fire or serious accident on the flight deck, that's not all that it is used for. The CWS also allows the crew to quickly and effectively deal with any biological or chemical warfare attacks. The pumps use seawater, which is corrosive. Therefore, tests of the system are generally done before a storm so that the falling fresh water can remove the salt water from the deck and machinery. Believe it or not, fires are relatively rare aboard large naval vessels. What are not rare are outbreaks of cases of flu, colds, neuroviruses, and other illnesses. Because these ships force hundreds or even thousands of crew members to eat, sleep, and work within inches of one another, Cleaning and sanitation are taken very seriously. In fact, many ships will clean quarters, restrooms, and shows several times a day with a powerful bleach concoction. This proved especially important during the COVID-19 pandemic when a single infection could spread throughout the ship in just a few days. When considering threats to a ship the size of an aircraft carrier or amphibious assault ship, it's easy to think of bombs, missiles, and torpedoes. On the contrary, Mother Nature is far more dangerous, be it in the form of uncontrollable fires or fast-spreading upper respiratory illnesses. Fortunately, some of the U.S. military's smartest scientists are working to make the systems used to fight fires and prevent outbreaks. The same goes for aircraft hangars, which can simultaneously store tens of billions of dollars of equipment. Were a fire to break out, all of these aircraft could be lost before firefighters could respond. And that doesn't even begin to calculate the potential loss of life in any of these scenarios. While it may be hard to think of the military as a safety-first organization, it's important to remember just how much work goes into eradicating threats that have nothing to do with the enemy.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.